Hey everyone, it's Lovestar. Welcome back to my art channel. Today I have a video that you guys have been requesting. So today we're going to be finally talking about my OCs. Yay! I'm really excited but also really nervous because I don't want to screw this up, guys. There's just so much to say. There's too much to say, okay? So, um, if you guys don't know, I'm a digital illustrator and my specialty is drawing characters, specifically my own original characters, and I have quite a lot of them, and I've been developing this kind of like story universe lore thing, like their own universe for, oh god, math, probably close to eight years now? Yeah, so probably around 2016 is when I started kind of developing this thing. Um, I don't really know what to call it per se, but I would say it's like my character universe. So um, you guys are interested in my characters, but before we talk about them, we're gonna have to give a little bit of context about where they live and what that universe, how that kind of works. Um, there's a lot to say. I'm gonna try to keep this um, short <laughs> but um it's probably gonna take a while i hope you guys don't mind longer videos because i just talk i talk a lot so let's get into things um my character universe thing is called the astroverse and it originally was called the dionaverse for the longest time i recently changed it just a few months ago to the astroverse um Honestly, because I completely forgot what the Dionaverse meant, it stood for something. It was like multiple words bashed into one, and then I just completely forgot what it meant. I also don't like how the word sounds or looks, and I don't like how it's kind of hard to pronounce if you don't know how it's pronounced. So I changed it to the Astroverse because Astra means star, and I'm love star, so you know, it's the star universe, the starverse, blah blah blah, whatever. So it's called the Astroverse. I think it's such a better, such a better name. Um, so we have the Astroverse, that's like the entire universe that holds everything. Inside the Astroverse, we have dimensions, and dimensions are kind of like planets. Some of them can be more like weird fourth dimensional realms that don't make any sense to us. Some of them might look like Earth or, you know, whatever, a terrestrial planet that exists in, in our world. Um, some of them might be just completely out of our comprehension, that we don't really talk about those. Um, I have a few dimensions that I've developed. Um, the most important one is Blueport. Blueport is basically my version of Earth. So it looks kind of like Earth. It's about four times bigger or something. I don't know. It's quite a lot bigger. And it hosts... It Yeah, that's where most of my characters live. The vast majority of them live in Blueport. I think there's only like one or two that don't. Um, so we're going to be talking about Blueport, and um, uh, there's some other stuff going on in the Astroverse, some other dimensions, notably the um, dimension of Dysteria, which is where the Saluna Angels live. The Saluna Angels are a type of god species, and the Saluna Angels actually created Blueport. So that's all I have to say about that. It's kind of a big <laughs> um, sidetrack story if I were to tell you guys about these Saluna Angels, but yeah, there's a lot of other stuff going on outside of Blueport that I'm developing slowly, but we'll just talk about Blueport <laughs> today. If you guys are interested in the other dimensions, I actually do have like the, va the basic um, descriptions of all of them on my website. I do have some uh, little blog posts about them on there, but I don't have anything about my OCs just yet. So today we're going to be changing that and I'm going to tell you guys about them. So um, you may notice that I'm drawing someone today. So this is actually Neptune. Uh, Neptune Rose. <laughs> kind of a silly name, but I love her. She's my first ever character that I've ever made in my life. And I made her so long ago. It must have been actually before 2016, before I started drawing officially, I think. But yeah, she was born around that time. And um, I originally made her for Minecraft roleplays that I would do with one of my old friends. And we would just build little worlds and I would roleplay as Neptune. She was my first character, so I would roleplay as her. Awesome! She's changed a lot since then. I completely rewrote her lore. But we're gonna start off by talking about Neptune and kind of some of the lore things that are related to her because they're pretty important about Blueport. So let's discuss first also a little bit about how Blueport works. So I did mention that it's kind of similar to Earth, however it's a lot bigger. So here's kind of how Blueport is. Um, so in Blueport, 
I would describe it as a very big mix of sci-fi and fantasy. So we have, you know, fantasy creatures, um, humanoid species, like fantastical landscapes, all of that stuff, you know. Just think of your favorite high fantasy movie and that's probably similar to what we got going on. So in terms of the natural world and biology and how all of that works, it's very much like fantasy, you know, obviously mixed in with some like realism, earth-like stuff. Um, the world, the actual terrain of Blueport is, um, we have the like earth continents on there, the earth countries and ethnicities and kind of societal structures. So we have like Americans and um, Italians or whatever. We have like, you know, earth-like people that kind of are similar. And then we also have some other made up countries, made up dimension, or made up continents. So extra continents and also some extra countries extra species well obviously there's only one okay whatever um yeah so we have like extra stuff it's like earth plus basically and in the actual like land of um blueport we have a mix of fantasy kind of ruled societies and then some that are more technological and sci-fi focused so we have basically two different types of regions we have the some of them are kind of um cyberpunk e some of them are post cyberpunk and yeah i hope that makes sense so basically yeah it's just kind of like you go to some places and they look more like a typical fantasy city or town or kingdom or whatever and then some of them are more of like the sci-fi cyberpunk mega cities and stuff like that it just depends on where you are some of them are kind of more mixed so uh those are my favorites because i love like when sci-fi and fantasy mix, and that's really cool to me. Anyway, so Neptune was born in um, the kingdom of Skymingham, which is, um, it's a kingdom in Norway, and Norway is very different compared to real Norway. <laughs> so I usually call it Blueport Norway, Blueport America, Blueport whatever, whatever, just to kind of clarify. So Blueport Norway is pretty different. Um, there is this huge kingdom that kind of rules over the country there called Skymingham. That's where Neptune was born. And um, so Skymingham is more fantasy rather than technological. So they don't have much tech. They focus more on magic. And yeah, so um, Neptune grew up around a lot of magic, not very much technology. And she wasn't exposed to technology until kind of later in her life. So. Yeah, I hope that kind of explains just the gist of how Blueport works. So let's talk a little bit more about Neptune. Um, I have a really big, like, giant essay for her backstory written down. So I'll try to recite it from my memory, but guys, let me tell you, <laughs> my memory is so bad. Um, that's why I have to write all of my lore down or also seriously forget everything about my characters. So this might be, I might miss a few details here. But, um, basically, the gist of how her life is, or how it went, and like, oh my gosh, how her backstory is, is she was born in Skymingham, and she was born in kind of like a more of a noble class, um, and she actually was, um, training to be a druid. So, in Skymingham, they actually have, so, <laughs> this is kind of, you know, um, uh, very on topic since I just released my Celtic Minecraft series, but they are kind of inspired by Celtic um, society and mythology. So I actually took some inspiration from like Celtic Druids and how their um, their Celtic religion used to be like, um, obviously before Christianization. So yeah, um, we have kind of like the Druid class in Skymingham and Neptune was training to be a Druid and so she was basically put into this role at a very young age. She's very intelligent and she really enjoyed it. So she was a very helpful person as a kid. She would always go around town trying to help the less fortunate families and try to teach kids her age new things. And she would, she would just, you know, really put in the work to bettering her community. And she was always um, seen as like a very, very, um, high potential druid in the like druid class basically so as she got older um, she continued on to this path um, but then something happens kind of around like I think she must she must have been around like 18 ish 
so just entering her adult years, a tragedy struck. Wow, what a surprise. Something bad happens. Anyway, um, just letting you guys know, I'm not like a professional writer or anything, so, you know, this, some of the lore is kind of playful and silly, but, you know, don't take me too seriously here. Anyway, just a side note. Um, so, basically what happened, I don't care about the Windows update. I already told- Anyway, so, um, basically what happened is, there is this kind of like a societal law, it's a moral law called, um, oh Jesus. <laughs> Let me look it up, because I forgot. Oh jeez, I'm so glad I write things down, but wow, this is embarrassing. Alright, let's go into here. It's like right at the tip of my tongue, too. The even field law. Okay, so I'm gonna read you guys what this means. Um, okay, let's just- okay, let's- I'll, I'll try to explain this. So basically what this means is in Blueport, there are kind of like three different parties of- um, there's three different types of fighting, basically, um, or warfare, I would say. So there is the technological- there's technological warfare, there's magic warfare, and there's kind of the mix of both. So we call this a technologic technology party, magica party. Magica is basically the study of magic, and magitech is obviously the combination of both technology and magic. So these are three different parties of fighting and warfare and kind of how society also works typically in like a certain area. So for example, Skymingham, where Neptune's from, is a magica party or it's a magica society. So anyway, so the Evenfield Law states, a, technol a technology party may only fight a technology party, a magic party may only fight a magica party, and a magitech party may only fight a magitech party. So basically what this means is that if you use magic in warfare, you cannot fight technology. If you use technology in warfare, you cannot fight the other ones, blah blah blah. I'm sure you get it by now, so <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. So here's what happened, guys. Um, Skymingham is a very powerful Magicka society. They have a lot of little secrets and hidden things in their kingdom some other people want access to. Um, so there's this group, <laughs> kind of like a terrorist organization, but anyway. Um, there's this group called Fection. Fection is a very important part of Blueport, so remember this name. Um, Faction is actually a military organization slash government organization that rules over the country of Cosmodire. Cosmodire is like right next to the United States, so kind of close to Canada, and um, it's a very unfortunately corrupt and kind of dilapidated country because of Faction. Faction actually got a lot of power um, because they were supposed to fix Cosmodire. They just made it worse and kind of turned it into like this tyrannical state. It's really fricked up. Um, but Faction, now with all this power and corrupt government officials, they kind of, um, they have a lot of conflicts going on with other parties, such as Starline. Starline is also super important. We'll talk about Starline in a second because it relates to Neptune. But, um, yeah, so Faction needs more power for to fight off other <laughs> enemies, basically. So what they decided to do was to raid Skymingham so they can abuse their magic uh, abilities, even though Faction is known as a, technologic, as a technology party. Um, they decided, you know what? Screw it. We'll just take over everyone. They broke the Evenfield law, so they fought a magicka party with technology. That's really, really, like, illegal. Obviously, like, you can't really do much about that. If someone decides to break the law, what can you really do? But it will definitely- there will be consequences if it- if it can be, you know, uh, helped. So, yeah, they raided Skymingham, and this put the entire kingdom into just disarray, as you can imagine. Um, Neptune actually lost one of her parents, I don't even remember- it was her dad, yeah, her dad died um, protecting the kingdom, um, a lot of her friends died, and um, yeah, so she- it was very traumatic, and um, she, after all this happened, and Skymingham kind of went into repair mode, basically, they tried to- um, they tried to put their kingdom back together. Neptune was just 
really distraught by what happened, obviously very traumatized, and she decided to actually... She wanted to go to Starline um, to get help. So Starline is the military slash government organization that takes, that is in control of the United States. And Starline is for the most part good, but they're not perfect. They're kind of more gray, you know what I mean? Faction is pretty bad. Like everyone can pretty much agree that Faction is a pretty bad organization. Starline is, they're good, but you know, they kind of do some bad things sometimes. So. Um, yeah, they're, they're the government organization that takes care of America and obviously that makes them a very big world figure. They have a lot of allies in different countries and um, it's, it's a group of people and they're kind of like a task force basically. So yeah, they protect people, they help people, they take care of the government stuff and military stuff, all that. So Neptune wanted to um, go to Starline, visit them in the United States to try to um, get help from them, get protection, because um, Starline and Faction, they're number one enemies. Starline despises Faction, they have a lot of history together. Now they sound like people. <laughs> enemies to lovers? I'm just kidding. But yeah, they have a lot of history together, very negative history. And Neptune was like, um, you know what, I think I'm gonna go to, to America to try to negotiate with Starline and see if we can get some sort of agreement together to get protection from them. Um, so since Neptune at this point, she's a druid, that's her profession. She's a very well-respected druid, a very um, good druid. She knows a lot of things, she's very intelligent. And um, druids around the world are seen as kind of diplomats and they have a very um, high status just around the world and they're, they're very well-respected. So Neptune kind of taking on this diplomatic role, she went to the to United States and spoke with Starline. She basically negotiated with them and they came upon an agreement that said that they would protect protect Skymingham and help them out and in return would get help from Skymingham and you know they kind of will have this kind of exchange of power. Um, so eventually what happened is Neptune actually decided to join Starline. So this was because she she was she's pissed at faction. She despises faction. She wants faction to burn to the ground and never return. So she thought, you know what? The best thing to do here is to take matters into my own hands and join Starline, which is faction's number one enemy. So she was very determined. She knew what she was getting into. She was not a fighter. She had no idea anything about like military or much about technology at this point. Um, it was very new to her. It's a whole different world and essentially taking on kind of like a government position is Yeah, so it was pretty tough for her, but she was determined and people in Starline obviously They were like, okay, are you sure like we'll give you this role if it's really what you want because you definitely have a lot of value to us But are you really sure this is for you? You're gonna be abandoning Skymingham basically and she was like, yeah, I'm gonna do this and so here's the dilemma that she had because it wasn't easy of a choice. She knew that if she joined Starline she would basically be abandoning her role as a druid and she is a big part of her community there at Skymingham. Um, but she knew that even though she would have to leave her people for the time being, she would be benefiting them in the end. She would be able to um, become- she wanted to become a protector for Skymingham, not just, you know, a druid. She wanted to be the protector. So yeah, she she wanted to protect them from from faction ever coming back, which is obviously just an, a looming threat that's very scary. I mean, Skymingham never fully recovered from what happened on in the raid, and it's very scary to kind of live in constant fear. So Neptune knew this and she was like, okay, there I, there's no point in just sitting around like a duck. Uh, just hoping that Starline would protect us. I need to do this myself. I need to take down Faction myself. So she joined Faction and there was a lot of outcry in Skymingham. People were very, you know, mad and just heartbroken and felt kind of betrayed. But the other, the other part of the group knew that she was doing the right thing and she was doing it from the goodness of her heart. And that she, she had really good intentions. And I mean, Personally, I think Neptune did the right thing. She was she's taking on a very uh, dangerous, difficult challenge. But anyway, it was for the best because Neptune 
after years of vigorous training and determination and hard work, she actually became the commander-in-chief of Starline. She um, trained very hard. Um, she learned how to use a bunch of different weapons. She now specializes in using a pistol and a uh, rifle. So that's kind of her main weapon of choice. She also, of course, knows combat skills, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, she's a leader now. She's a leader of a military government organization. Very, very strong woman. Awesome. And so I should also mention, I completely forgot to mention, but this is such an important thing. I can't believe I didn't mention this, but um, people in Blueport, they're actually born with powers, magical powers. So this is the norm. Most people have at least one power or maybe two. Um, it depends on the species. Some species, um, for example, if you're like maybe a demon species, angel species, or whatever else, sometimes you'll have powers that are associated specifically with your species, or just abilities that are associated with that. Anyway, but um, usually for humans, blueport humans, um, they have like special magical powers. And Neptune was born with, um, she was born with the power of flight, which is not too uncommon. Um, and she was also born with an elemental power called, well, she calls it her flare. And it's kind of this blue elemental power that she can control. And it's kind of like a plasma fiery kind of elements, nothing, it's kind of ambiguous. But anyway, so she has this power and the flare is actually really powerful. And she never really, um, she used to mostly, for you know her druidic purposes back then but she had to learn how to use it for combat and it was a big challenge for her she <laughs> she's a bit of a slow learner so she um definitely had to train really hard to kind of get control of her flair and learn how to use it in combat but that is also one of her weapons now she uses it in in fighting so one of the people who actually trained her to um learn all of her combat skills is Marina. Marina is another one of my characters and she is actually Neptune's current girlfriend. So they met through, you know, Neptune joining Starline and Marina, she is a guard and she's a very skilled um, fighter. So she trained Neptune and Neptune and her just grew a bond over time. They became really close friends. They would train a lot together and ultimately they ended up in a relationship. So now they're happily uh, girlfriends. And yeah, so <laughs> um, before, before Marina though, kind of earlier on in her career when she was first kind of um, settling into Blue, uh, not Blue, <laughs> into uh, United States, she, um, was friends and then dated um, one of my other characters called Blaze. And Blaze is also one of my really early on, like very old characters. He was actually one of my first male characters. Um, so yeah, they dated for a while and they ultimately ended things because they weren't very compatible, but they're still besties like till this day, they're really close. And Blaze now is um, married to his husband, Alex. Alex and Blaze also work for Starline currently, and yeah, so all four of them, they're kind of like a little friend group, you know, uh, like a double couple. Yeah, they're really cute. So, um, yeah, so anyway, Marina really helped Neptune learn how to fight. Blaze helped Neptune kind of, you know, come out of her shell a bit and learn kind of how to be a stronger leader, stronger person overall, and ultimately, the friends that she now has in the Starline were a big help in teaching her how to become such a strong leader that she is now. Um, Neptune still has, you know, she has a lot to learn still. She does do her job very well, and currently in the story, we still have the issue of Fection. Fection only gets stronger, basically, as Starline does too, um, and so Fection is still around, unfortunately, for Neptune. Um, but uh, with her help, they really keep Fection at bay. Fection has not touched Skymingham since, which is good, and that is definitely to the help from the help of Neptune, really enforcing that. They get a lot of protection. And yeah, so good on good on that. Um, but now Neptune's goal is obviously to just destroy Fection, but this is really difficult, obviously, to take down a whole government organization 
that um, controls an entire country, it's, it's a lot easier said than done. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much Neptune, um, her like overarching storyline. Um, yeah, so she's, she's a very strong, determined person. She definitely has some flaws, like she's not perfect. She's a bit short-tempered, um, she's still kind of conflicted and she kind of carries around this guilt about what happened in the past with Skymingham. She, she hasn't really returned to her druidic roles either, so she feels kind of like she betrayed her people, which is not true, but yeah, she, she definitely kind of has this like attachment to her past that makes her carry a lot of guilt and a bit of regret and she had to leave her family behind but you know they're still obviously there for her and she visits she has her mother and her sister chanel so yeah that is pretty much the gist of neptune she has a lot more kind of like nuanced details about her character that i've written down i just oh my gosh i, I can't remember them and it's probably just you know it's kind of random, you know, random little things. I could, I can read you guys that in a second, um, but I'll also tell you her interests and hobbies so you can get a little bit of a better idea about what she do, what she does outside of work. Um, so she really likes video games. She really enjoys painting landscapes, um, reading books, baking, um, astronomy, studying magicka, which is magic and philosophy and traveling. So she has a lot of hobbies actually, kind of like me. She does a lot of things. Um, but yeah, she she really enjoys kind of like intellectual topics. She studies a lot of things. She's always learning. She is also pretty creative. She's always been into art and painting. And that was something that she especially did when she was living in Skamingham, you know, being um, part of kind of this druidic Celtic religion. Um, she was taught a lot about the natural world and kind of how to rep represent it through art. So she was definitely very much into making art and stuff like that. She also enjoys traveling. It's something that she really likes about her job because, you know, um, being the commander in chief, she gets to go to a lot of different places, which is pretty cool. Um, and she's a gamer. I <laughs> have always had her be a gamer since she was like, um, first created probably because I really liked video games, but yeah, she's a gamer girl. She yeah I'm just kind of looking through her character sheet right now I guess I can read you guys a few things about her too just from what I've wrote in the past um, I've basically told you everything that I can remember so um, Yeah, so I actually did this little um, kind of question fill out thing for her. I found this little like develop OC development questions thing on Pinterest. I decided to do it for Neptune. So um, we can read that out if you guys don't mind. Um, so does Neptune have any siblings or family members in her age group? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Neptune has an older sister, Chanel, and they're really close. Uh, they grew up together and Chanel still lives in Skymingham with their mom. Um, but yeah, they're really close still. What was Neptune's relationship with her mother like? Not was, but is. <laughs> Neptune is very close to her mother. She taught her a lot about being a druid, as she was also in the druid council. The two of them have a close emotional bond till this day. They actually bonded a lot after the whole tragedy happened, and when Neptune returned home for the first time after being um, in Starline, they shared a lot of emotions together and kind of really grew close. So yeah, that was kind of like a little emotional moment for them. Um, what was Neptune's relationship with her father like? Neptune was very close to her father before he died in the Fection Raids. He taught Neptune to be resilient and some basic combat skills, which came in handy for getting a small head start when she began training in Starline. So she knew a little bit of combat. I actually forgot that. <laughs> See, this is how I write things down. I always forget. But yeah, I guess she got a little bit of a heads up, head start. Um, but she was still a big noob. Let me tell you, it took her a while to <laughs> learn the pro skills. Has Neptune ever witnessed something that fundamentally changed her? If so, does anyone else know? Neptune witnessed the death of her father and the destruction of her home. She's seen countless of people die during the faction raid. This not only traumatized her, caused her years of grief, but also led her to a whole new life. Starline. Awesome. Well, not, not awesome, but Starline. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> Word choice. 
on an average day, what can be found in Neptune's pockets? That's kind of a random question, but I guess good to know. Her phone, a piece of candy, and a handmade wolf charm from the Council of Druids. All right guys, I just have to take a break to let my camera recharge, great. But let's answer just a few more questions. Um, so, does Neptune have any recurring themes in her dreams? Her dreams are often abstract, reminiscent of the Nordic landscape she grew up in. Another common theme is war. Horrific nightmares of war. That's unsurprising. Um, but yeah, speaking of Norway, or the Nordic landscapes, so I wanted to clarify. Um, so the Celtic part of... The Celtic influence of Norway in Blueport is actually specific to just a certain region. So the more north you go, the more Norse it becomes, as it usually is. Um, so yeah, Norse paganism is more commonly um, practiced the more north you go, and then the south you go is kind of more Celtic. That's just kind of like a specific area that happened because of historical events and whatever. So yeah, just wanted to clarify that. What does Neptune like in other people? She likes bravery. People who can work well in a team. She also enjoys talking about intellectual topics, so she definitely enjoys well-educated people, as well as those who can be bold and have fun. What does Neptune dislike in other people? Close-minded people. Those with inflated egos. Traitors. Those with no loyalty. And those who harm nature. How quick is Neptune to trust someone else? She is not one to trust easily. Those who want to earn her trust must work hard, show solid proof of trustworthiness. She often examines other people's motives very carefully. It can take months to gain her trust. How does Neptune behave around children? She is protective above all else, but not emotionally available to children. She sees them as liabilities who must be protected at all costs, but not so much as people to develop relationships with. So a little bit harsh, but meh. <laughs> How does Neptune normally deal with confrontations? Outside of physical confrontations, Neptune will assess the confrontation with logic. If she agrees with the statements against her, she will make an effort to change. So she's a bit more logical when it comes to social interaction. Um, what did Neptune dream of being as a child? Did that dream come true? She dreamt of being a druid, as it was instilled into her all her life, even as a child. She knew her path was, she knew her path was already set, but she was eager to become a druid. Her dream did come true, but she left that dream behind voluntarily to pursue a bigger purpose. How quick or slow is Neptune to resort to physical violence in a confrontation? She will quickly resort to violence. <laughs> She prepares for physical altercation at any confrontation. This is how she was trained. Sorry, there's an airplane. She is also short-tempered, which also plays into this. So yeah, she's a bit of a violent girly, but that's kind of how she is. Um, what does your character find repulsive or disgusting? Affection and everyone in charge of it. And lastly, the, the last question I wrote down here was, in the face of criticism, is Neptune defensive, self-deprecating, or willing to improve? Willing to improve. Only if the criticism is well-mannered and constructive. She will quickly get defensive at ill-meaning uh, criticism. So yeah, those were most of the questions that I wrote down. I did skip through a few of them for the sake of time, um, but I really enjoy that activity. I think it's such a great way to develop your characters because most of these questions are things you just don't really think about, especially the what's in her pocket question that is just so random. But yeah, a lot of these answers I kind of wrote down on the spot while just kind of thinking like, hmm, what would Neptune do? How is Neptune like? What was she, you know, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, if you guys have OCs and you need help develop developing them, I would highly recommend you trying one of these question prompts. Um, but yeah, I hope that you were able to learn a little bit about Neptune and also just my world in general. There's lots more characters to go through, especially kind of the more intricate um, stories that go on in Blueport, like the uh, Starline Faction conflict, some of the other country conflicts, and there's a lot of things going on there. So if you guys want to um, leave a comment, because I want to know, do you want to know more about my OCs? Or are you interested in hearing about some of the actual like world-related lore? Um, like how the world works and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, tell me what you guys want to see next. I might do a poll to see which OC you want me to um, talk about next. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about Neptune, uh, leave them down below and I'll try to answer them. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the drawing and the talk. I'm sorry if I wasn't very articulate. I was just pulling most of this information from my head from memory. So yeah, I tried my best. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for showing interest in this topic of my OCs. I'm very flattered. Um, but yeah, um, 
think that's all I have to say. Be sure to check out my website if you want to uh, get some more information about my whole world or the Astroverse. I am starting to slowly write some more articles on there. So yeah, hopefully I'll write some more stuff about my OCs on there soon so you guys can read about that. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you all next time. Bye! Hi guys, Editing Love Star here. So before I end the video, I actually wanted to tell you guys um, about this drawing that I was working on because actually when I was recording this video, like the face cam part of it, I didn't have the drawing finished. But now I want to tell you guys about the drawing if you're still interested. Um, so actually this is kind of a continuation of a drawing I made last year. Um, of Neptune when she was younger and a druid in Skymingham. So this is what the original piece looks like. So this was probably when she was around maybe like 16, 17 and she was a druid and you know she, uh, back then she actually had like lighter hair and stuff so that's her in her past. And then this drawing is actually her in the current in, or in current day. Um, so she now has a bit darker hair and um, she's in kind of like a starline combat gear and you know obviously she's changed and uh she's looking kind of back towards her old self and just reminiscing on the, how much has changed and in a good way obviously like she's a much stronger better person now and yeah so these two drawings kind of ended up being like a continuation of each other which was not intentional when i first drew this piece for the video but i when i was drawing it i was like oh my god this is similar to my old druid neptune piece so i ended up kind of leaning into that and making it kind of like a continuation and yeah so that's the story behind this piece it's you know a very simple drawing um one thing that kind of annoyed me about it is that it was just so compositionally similar to the old one but you know it, you get you get an idea of how much she's changed at least visually and you can kind of see it in her face like she looks a little bit more fierce and strong and yeah so pretty cool i really like how her design has kind of um evolved over time actually you guys who are still watching at the end you're gonna get a little treat i'm gonna show you guys oh some of my old neptune art oh my gosh what the f anyway so this is really old this is probably from maybe 2017 or something when i was first starting digital art and of course i drew neptune a lot back then um when i was first getting used to digital and um this is how she looks now her her design has changed quite a bit I'm, i mean the, of course she still has her iconic purple hair although i made the colors a lot less of an eyesore over time and um yeah she is just over time has become a completely different character, basically. Um, I've changed her story, I've developed her personality a ton, I feel like she has a lot more dimension now, and yeah, her design is, you know, better now, <laughs> but still, you kind of get to see her past design in her current one. Um, but yeah, so that is, you know, how things have changed over time, and I decided to call this piece Change, because it just showcases how much she's developed as a character and, you know, as an OC of mine. So, yep, that is the story behind this piece. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think of this drawing. Um, I got it done in just a few days. I didn't spend, like, too much time on it, but I wanted to, I wanted it to look nice. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, definitely just my, my style is so inconsistent, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, you know, that's kind of just how it is. I just kind of try new things whenever I draw and it's a good way for me to learn and, you know, kind of see what I like. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and of course leave a comment and tell me what you think. Also be sure to tap the like button to let me know that you want to see more content like this in the future. And with that being said guys, again, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you all next time. Bye!